Hi everyone and welcome back and this is our next episode of Cooking with Generoso and Lily and today we're going to make Vietnamese slash Chinese cabbage rolls. So they're really not a dish that you would necessarily get in a restaurant. They're something that's purely invented by my family um, but I grew up eating them and I always thought they were really delicious and they're kind of a variant on stuffed cabbage rolls that I think are, that are very common in Eastern European cuisine except they're a little bit more on the Vietnamese or Chinese side. I don't really know where the origins of it come from but I think it's one of those kinds of dishes that families come up with when you look at your fridge and you realize hey I have some ground pork, hey I have some cabbage because you always have cabbage left over and then hey I have all these other things so why don't I put it together and make a new soup based dish. So shall we see the ingredients? There are a lot this time around. So first we have mushrooms, lots of mushrooms. The stuffing for the cabbage will have a little bit of mushroom in it and then the soup itself will as well. Behind that we have some bean thread. These are four spools. We're actually going to use one. Um, and that's going to go into the stuffing of the cabbage rolls. And um, we have two eggs. Those are going to be used simply to bind the cabbage rolls. Uh, behind that we have some sesame oil. Then we have some chicken broth. You can use really any broth that you like. I just happen to have chicken broth on hand. We have some soy sauce. We have oyster sauce. We have the always lovely fish sauce. We have some cayenne pepper. We have some black pepper. And we have some garlic powder as well. Now, we have two pounds of ground pork. This is not particularly lean. Um, you can really adjust it to the leanness that you would like. This is mildly fatty, I would say, but um, keep in mind that the more fat, even though not so nutritious, the better your broth will taste. So it's kind of a trade-off. And behind that, we have the Napa cabbage. You can use, you can actually make these rolls with all kinds of cabbage. You could use Napa, you could use regular American cabbage. Um, Napa cabbage just happened to be fresher when we went to the market, so we went with that. I've made this in the past with uh, regular American cabbage too. The only di major difference will most likely be the way that you roll them up. Um, I think Napa is actually a little bit easier to roll up because its structure is a little better. And then outside of that, we have two gigantic carrots mm. and one big red onion. And then we have lots of cloves of garlic. This is like basically a lily handful of, of garlic. That's 12. And then we have a long bit of ginger. This is about a two inch piece of ginger, which we're probably going to use about one inch for the actual stuffing and then another inch for the actual broth. And then we have our various tools. We have two knives, of course, and we have our peeler, which we'll desperately need for the carrots. And we have a strainer and a bowl. And this is actually going to be particularly for the preparation of the Napa cabbage. So we'll show you that. But let's get chopping and we'll see you soon. We've finished chopping up everything. I know there's a lot of chopping. So first I prepared the ginger two ways. One into like fine strips, uh, almost like a julienne, um, in order to put into the soup. The other is minced in order to put into the meat. Now we have two hunks of minced garlic. Remember, half will go into meat, half will go into soup. And then we have an entire bowl of the red onion, very finely diced. Um, and again, half in the meat, half in the soup. Now we have some mushrooms that are very finely chopped up, and those will go into the meat. And then we have a whole plate of mushrooms to go into soup. Then we have some carrots, which will go into soup. And then we have bean thread, which is soaking. This is just one spool, and that's going to be going into the meat. And then the eggs have been cracked and scrambled, and they will be treated whenever we are ready to roll up our cabbage. But before we can roll up our cabbage, we have to make sure that we wash it. Remember, Napa cabbage is very dirty, so make sure you give it a very good and clean wash. I've separated everything out into leaves, and now we're just going to very lightly boil them. Jean has very kindly put this water to boil, and it is boiling away. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do this in cycles. Yeah, but about how many leaves there are you going to do? This is probably a total of maybe like 15 leaves. I normally boil a little bit more than that is necessary just because... Um, you lose a few, don't you? You lose a few and also like it's better to have extra cabbage than to not have enough. 
because then you have a giant pile of raw meat that you have to deal with. Now when you see me do shells, I'll be doing the same thing. I always make more than I'm actually going to serve for that reason. Yeah. So again, what you're going to do is just very quickly boil some of these. Keeping in mind that Napa boils really fast, so see this one leaf is already ready to go. I'm going to put it right back into the strainer. And we're going to do that with all the leaves in here. This is not going to take any time really at all to boil. So you're going to cook these for a little tiny bit and then you're going to leave them there for a while? Yeah, and then I'm going to leave them there for a while while I finish the filling. Alright. So, I will see you back when we have finished boiling all of these leaves and we are ready to start prepping the filling. Alright, so we finished boiling all of our cabbage leaves. So right after I finished boiling them, I hit them with cold water to try to cut all of the cooking so that we can make sure that these are, are nice whenever we uh, get ready to fry them up. So now we are going to prepare the stuffing! So those, here is our two pounds of pork. I'm going to put the mushrooms in. Doo -doo -doo. I'm going to put half of the onion in. I'm going to put the minced garlic, uh, sorry, the minced ginger in. We'll also put the minced garlic in too. But only half, right? But only half. Half. In addition, I'm going to put some fish sauce in it. Probably about a teaspoon. And then I'm going to put some soy sauce. And then the tiniest bit of sesame oil. Probably about maybe a teaspoon and a half. I'm going to put some black pepper in this. This is very important. Probably about half a tablespoon. And then just a couple shakes of cayenne pepper just to add a little bit of warmth. And then some garlic powder just for extra measure. And that's about a half a teaspoon. And then outside of that, we're going to mix this all up. Feel free to just use your hands to mix it up. Make sure that all of the ingredients get all the way through all of the pork. And make sure this is all very nicely and evenly mixed. So I'll essentially make meatballs inside of your cabbage rolls. Alrighty, and so that looks pretty nicely mixed, and at this point in time, I'm going to grab the beet thread. So what I'm going to do first is just quickly drain out some of the water. You don't want to put all of that water into the meat. And then, wring it out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just throw it right on in. And as I'm... At this point, they have soaked for a little bit, so you can pull them apart. I'm gonna just pull them a little bit apart, that way you don't get extremely long pieces of bean thread mm -hmm. within the pork, because those could be a little tricky to eat, especially for the little ones. We tried ripping this up, actually, in its earlier stages, and amazingly, this bean thread's like steel wool. It does not break up very easily. It really was. I was really shocked by how how incredibly thick it was, and also how resistant it was it to gave being nothing. pulled. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that the bean thread mixes all into the pork very nicely. And that'll just add a nice additional texture element to this. And I also think bean thread in general is always really good within soup. Um, Remember that bean thread is not vermicelli. Please be very careful when you buy it. This is not, not, not vermicelli. Bean thread is, I believe, made with mung bean, and so it's actually transparent when you cook it, and it's very chewy. Um, 
sometimes around like uh, Lunar New Year, you'll see it fried with vegetables and tofu and bean curd. But it is not vermicelli, which is uh, white when you boil it and is often served with a fish sauce on the side. This is, these two are very different, and sometimes the markets will call both vermicelli. Make sure that you, when you buy it, it says bean bread, because otherwise the, uh, you'll get a pretty mushy meatball in the middle, which is not very fun for anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to clear off our table for a little bit so that we can get a little bit more rolling space. And we'll see you in just a couple of seconds. Welcome back everyone. We've cleared off the table so that we have some rolling room. And now what I've done is this is just a uh, plastic mat in order to make sure that you don't get uh, raw meat on your wooden cutting boards. And here's a spare plate which will contain all the rolls. And here is the egg. What is one thing I'm going to do to it is just add a tiny bit of soy sauce, maybe just a teaspoon, just to make sure that the egg has a tiny bit of flavor. Um, it's not going to be really used to coat the uh, uh, cabbage rolls, they're mostly going to be used just to close them up. Sure. So here we go. So let's take one napa leaf, get a handful of meat and bean bread. And we're just going to roll it on it, exactly like an egg roll. And then right at the end, I'm just going to dip my fingers into the egg. Put that right there. And then close them on up. And then put a tiny bit of egg wash on the outside too. What we're going to do is we're actually going to fry right at these closings uh, where the egg is just to kind of bind everything all together. And I'm going to put them on the plate uh, facing down so that the closing point is pushed down onto the plate. And we'll do another one just so that you can check it out and then we'll finish the rest of them off camera. So again, another handful of pork and bean bread and you mushrooms you and onions. Um, I just kind of watched my mom make it when I was a kid. Okay. Um, we used to eat it a lot when it got a little bit cooler out mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. And I didn't make it for a long time because it kind of requires a lot of work. but. I think that they're really delicious. Phenomenal, I really enjoy these. Glad you were making them. All right, and then again, closing part face down, and there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these up, and then we'll get working on the broth, and then fry these guys up so that we make sure that they're closed off, and then you can just let this recipe sit for a while, and we will see you very, very shortly. Alright, so we've finished rolling up 15 cabbage rolls! Yay! That's actually probably all that is going to fit into the pot in the first place. So, um, that's going to be perfect for us. Uh, in our case, we actually have some meat left over. And that's actually kind of a great thing because we actually still have some egg left over too. So when you're all done with this, and while you're waiting for the actual cabbage rolls to cook, you can actually make meat patties and eat those as rice too. And just all you would do is just mix the egg and then the meat, and then you have a whole separate meal, which is kind of a nice thing, but it's a purely coincidence because we are limited by the number of cabbage leaves and the amount of room in our actual pot. Um, so next, before we actually fry up the cabbage rolls, I want to get started on the stock. So what we're going to do our pot has been heating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And let's coat the bottom of the pot with some oil. You want to coat it very liberally. And then once that oil has heated, we are going to add our ginger and our garlic. Really nice smells will start coming off the pan. Why, yes, it is. After that, we're going to add all of our beautiful red onions. The other half of the pot. Yes. I love red onion. It's a pain to cut because I don't know, for me, it makes me tear up very severely, but I think this one's really nice. Again, 
gonna toss this in the oil. Again, I think that red onion has a really beautiful flavor and I think it smells really nice. I think they're a little sweeter and the flavor's a little more intense as well. the because my grandmother would actually make fresh stock from chickens every week. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have that chance here, so we have to end up using the chicken broth, or beef broth, or veggie broth, whatever you have on hand. Um, it, of course, if you have fresh stock, do please use it for this dish. It will only make it better. But I know that that's a pretty uh, rare thing for folks to have these days. All of our veggies are cooked. We are now going to put in the chicken broth. This is a 32 ounce box of chicken broth. I like the boxes more than the cans. I don't know about you, Jean. What do you think? Anything that is vacuum packed makes me happy. We're just going to add the entire box. Really? Yeah. Oh, because the vegetables are actually going to soak up some of it, and then we want enough broth to actually coat our um, cabbage rolls when we're ready to put them in here. Sounds fair to me. All right. Stir this on up. The, the, wa the broth is a little thicker <laughs> with veggies than probably would be suited for the cabbage. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add some water to the pot. I just took the same bowl that my mushrooms were previously in, filled it with water about two thirds of the way. I'm going to add it on in here. As usual, the fish sauce kind of dominates the smell of the room, <laughs> but a lot of garlic and a lot of ginger kind of permeates as well. It's nice, really, really pretty smell. It's really strong right now. Oh, it yeah. will actually, it, it will ease out and smooth out over the hour that it's going to cook. Mm. So I put the lid on that, 
just let it cook and that broth is going to be ready by the time uh, we finish frying up all of the cabbage rolls to actually begin to kind of soak into the cabbage rolls as well. So uh, give us another maybe 10 seconds and we'll see you very shortly so that we can fry up and make the cabbage rolls really pretty. We have cleaned up a little bit and now this pan is heating up and I'm going to cover it with a lot of oil as well because we are going to fry up the cabbage rolls. The frying process is meant to make sure that the cabbage rolls essentially don't fall completely apart in the soup. Um, sometimes if we were not, if we were running out of time, my mom would actually put toothpicks into the cabbage rolls and then cook them in the broth. I don't really like that because I always like worried about forgetting to pull out a toothpick. So I've done, gone with the frying method instead. The same thing happens to me whenever I order deli sandwiches. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so all you're gonna do. So we're gonna actually remember closure side down. You just essentially want to make sure that these stay closed once they're in the broth. your time with these. Don't feel like you need to be too rushed. Be very careful because they are gentle at this point. Tetris. It is a little more Tetris. Two babies left. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? I think we are. That's a tight squeeze, but we got it. We got it. Alright. So I'm gonna just spread these out a little bit. There we go. So that we got the little guy in the corner better suited. I'm gonna let these again fry on the side that is closed, and then we'll be able to flip them over in a moment. This one's probably about ready to flip. Nope. Not ready to flip. You'll start to see that the ends are going to cook on some of them. That's fine. It's going to be great. You want them to brown a little bit. Because remember, you've coated those sides on the, with egg. And this also gives the meat a little bit of an opportunity to cook as well. That way, you need to make sure that you don't have any raw cabbage rolls. Mm -hmm. It's like that be too tasty. This guy can flip. You see that there's a tiny bit of golden brown. That's perfectly fine. You don't want it to be too, too brown because otherwise the cabbage will be mushy. And when you're flipping these over, make sure that you're flipping along the side of where the closure is. That also helps to make sure that they don't open on up. It's a little bit of a tricky test, but you get the hang of it after a couple. Check that one off your back up. But if that happens to you, don't worry, it will. You can just flip it right back on over and give it a little bit more of a fry. So we're going to fry these up and then um, put them into the broth and we'll show you that next step in a little. Our cabbage rolls have fried and become golden, so I'm just going to drop them straight into the broth. And that pot is boiling! It is. Remember, the key to all of this, make sure that the closing point is facing down. So you want to make sure that close point is down, put it to the bottom of the pot. Same with number two. Close point down. Of the you'll slowly see these buddies rise and you'll also be able to kind of tighten up and make sure that none of them reopen. Again, close point down, bottom of the pot. Now how long will they cook? We'll cook probably for another 40 minutes. Fantastic. 
and that means that all the pork flavor will nicely come through on everything. Do you eventually serve this with the broth? Yes, absolutely. Close point down and to the bottom. It's a little bit of a labor of love, but it's certainly a delicious dish. I've had this once before, and it's one of my favorite things that Lily makes. I really love them. Again, it's a little bit different. Obviously, it's a lot different from the Eastern European version of these, but it still creates this overwhelmingly beautiful winter dish. And again, this is a little bit like Tetris, so don't worry. Just want to make sure that they fit in and that the closures stay in a position to where they can stay closed. One last buddy. Right on in there. All right. Excellent. So these guys are all ready to just hang. I'll put the lid on them. It's 107. It's 107. I'm gonna turn the heat a little bit down. Right now it's at a roaring high. I'm gonna put it down to like about a medium high. Cool. All right. And so we will see you in about 40 minutes and these should be ready and all set to go. Keep in mind that as you see, these are gonna rise a little bit. You probably wanna push them back down. So you need to be a little attentive during the 40 minutes, but not supremely so. It's not a whole ton of like, it's not like risotto, which Dean will probably show you soon, in which you actually have to stir every 45 minutes. But again, just stay attentive, making sure that these little packages also stay closed too. Cool. All right. So it's actually been an hour, mostly because of the fact that the brown rice took forever to cook. Ah! But this dish does really get better with time anyway, because as with any soup, it gets more flavorful. So all I'm going to do, I've put some brown rice at the bottom of this bowl. I'm going to very carefully pick up one of my cabbage rolls, making sure to reach into the bottom of the pan to get some carrots and some delicious mushrooms. I'm going to grab... One more roll. Oh, that one fell apart a little bit, but that's okay. And grab a little bit more carrot and mushroom. And we'll grab one last roll to serve. And ta -da! Those are Vietnamese slash Chinese cabbage rolls. Enjoy!